Hi, today we're going to do a raglan sleeve. Raglan sleeve actually is the hardest sleeve that you can create and I'm not being mean by assigning a raglan sleeve, it's just that every year when I have taught the AM squared line and even years when I haven't taught this AM squared line, the students want to create a raglan sleeve and usually they make a mess of it so I decided that this year that everybody needs to at least have some exposure to creating a raglan sleeve. A raglan sleeve, as you can see from this design, is one that goes from the armhole to the neck. So it's usually curved like this. So this is a cute little fit and flare dress with the raglan uh, sleeve and it happens to be a cap sleeve. So raglan, of course, can be cap, it can be short, it can be at the elbow or it can be long. To complete this particular style we have a court, the torso portion added to the bodice and then a circle skirt. So raglan sleeve, regular bodice, uh, torso portion and then dropped waist with the circle skirt. So now the pieces that you need to complete a raglan sleeve is that you need your front bodice with one dart, you need your back bodice, and you need your sleeve block. So you want to bring in your existing block patterns, the ones that have been corrected, and then delete all other uh, styles. So you want to delete uh, your two dart, uh, designs and, uh, in, and your existing torso designs, you want to delete all of those. So now to get started, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move our sleeve away here and we're going to concentrate on both the uh, front and the back um, bodice pieces. You need to have your book in front of you as the visuals will really help. I highly recommend that you either just watch me as I'm demonstrating all the way through rather than trying to do it as I am uh, doing uh, the sleeve. So if you watch it again all the way through and then you can uh, start to mimic what I am creating. So the first thing, uh, the first step is to take the back and we want to rotate the dart to the armhole. So this you have done before. I'm going to click on that dart, shoulder dart in the back and rotate the dart to the point. And so I'm going to just click on the armhole here and click here and so I don't want to do that. Okay, and I want to take the entire fullness out from the shoulder dart. I then want to get rid of my shoulder dart, get rid of that grade point that it left, a couple of grade points, and now I want to get rid of this dart image like we had done before that we're not going to sew that dart in and it just made the armhole bigger. So that is our whole goal right here is just to make that back armhole bigger. Now we're going to move over here to the front and with the front it has in the book that you're going to take a half inch from the waist dart and rotate it up to the armhole where the notch is. So again I'm going to go to rotate dart to point. I'm going to select my notch and I'm just going to click and instead of percent I want it to be a half inch. So again I'm not putting in a percent, I'm just putting in one half inch there. And I just go ahead and click on OK. Then I can get rid of my dart image and those points that I have and at this point I also want to you know, clean up any extra 
points on my sleeve so I don't want to have any extra points when I'm creating a raglan. Then uh, we're moving on to uh, still figure 1A and figure 1B and the next thing that the author has is to lower the armhole. So I'm going to get rid of my squared point line here and I'm going to move my armhole down one and a half inches and she says one and a half inches or about one and a half inches so we'll just go ahead and do the one and a half inches it greatly depends upon the designer's intent here I'm going to do the same for the back I'm going to get rid of these extra little curve points in here and then going to take my back and I'm going to move it down one and a half inches. So just to review up to this point, we have taken out the shoulder dart off the back uh, and we have moved it into the armhole. We have taken a half inch of the dart from the waist and moved it into the armhole and then we have now lowered the front bodice and the back bodice by one and a half inches. So we've completed uh, figure one. Now we want to move on to figure two. And figure two has that for the both the front and the back that we're going to cut a yoke piece. So I'm going to move to my back first. And the author has to add a point. This will be a grade point at one and one-fourth inches away from the shoulder. So it's the, there's my shoulder neck point and the point that I'm adding is one and a quarter inches away. Then uh, she has that you add a point that is above the notch and you want an exact amount so I'm going to go ahead and put a fourth of an inch above my notch. It's important to make sure that the notches are at the same point for both the front and uh, for the, the back. I'm then going to draw a diagonal line from my neck to my point on the armhole. So you can see my diagonal line here and I want a point connection for both of those because I'm going to cut them away. So now I can use build piece and I'm going to build both my back and my yoke. Now before I go on, I am going to label these pieces. That You'll have to label, uh, label them several times but if you don't label them you're going to get confused as to what is what. I don't have to put my code in uh, right now because of course I'm going to be relabeling them later on. But again if you don't label you're going to get confused here as to what piece is what. Now I can send my original back bodice back to the sidelines here and because I have my two yoke pieces. Now I'm going to move over here to the front and I'm essentially going to do the same thing as I did to the back. I'm going to come to my neck and again take a look at the drawing that she has in the book. I want that to be a grading and a curve point my previous point will be one and a fourth, 1.25 and then we're going to come to, here's the notch and we want to be one fourth inch above so you notice that I was very consistent one and a fourth for the front, one and a fourth for the back a fourth of an inch above the notch 
in the front, fourth of an inch above the notch in the back. And now I'm going to take my draft line here. I want a point connection and I'm going to draft my diagonal line. Go ahead and use my build piece. And again, I want to move my pieces away. I want to label them. And I'm going to delete my piece off the screen that I don't need. So now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a front bodice and a yoke, and I'm looking at the back bodice and a yoke. So that actually is pretty straightforward. Now we have to move on to the sleeve. And this is where it gets very tricky and there's lots of lines here. So I'm going to reposition this sleeve so it looks exactly like you see here in the book and as she has in the book she has the left side as the back the right side as the front so I'm going to keep them the same looks like I have a few extra little notches there that I don't need okay let me get rid of some extra notches okay so now we have to pay attention to our yoke pieces, which is the front, which is the back, and we're going to be placing them on top of the sleeve. So we first want to get it ready. I'm going to zoom in on my sleeve cap and get rid of my squared corner points. And I'm then going to use move point and move it down the same amount that I moved my bodices so I move them an inch and a half so I'm going to move the sleeve down an inch and a half and as you can see it has now very odd kind of shaping to it almost like a mushroom kind of a shape so again I got rid of extra points and again make sure that you're paying attention to the back and the front of the sleeve here okay so I've got my sleeve and as you can see in figure four I have moved my armhole points down the inch and a half I'm going to ignore the information about the oh, elbow dart okay now I want to take my back yoke and this is why again it's really important to label those pieces here's my back yoke and I want to pay very close attention to this back yoke and which direction that it is supposed to head so the back yoke right here we have a point number three that point three is representing B in your book Point four here is representing point X in your book. So I'm going to place three or point B onto the middle of my sleeve. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point onto my sleeve cap that is at exactly halfway. And that is going to become point Z and it should be a gray point. I'm then going to take here my point three and I want to walk it to my point Z. So if I'm looking at it, there's my sleeve here. And then I want to click on, again, this is point Z. And 
and I'm going to rotate the piece. So there's my pivot point. And I'm going to move it down to the cap. So you can see that I have the shaping just like the book. And again, very important to follow the shaping there that's in the book. Now, if I look at my front here and zoom in a little closer here so you can see the front, point one is D in the book. So point one is D. And point four right here is X. So I want point one to be walked to Z. So you can see that they're attached. And I'm, I'm using the walk tool just to make sure that they do click right on point Z. And then I'm going to again pivot this down so that I can see. Now you can see that the pieces kind of overlap each other as they're supposed to. So this is figure 5a as you're taking a look at that. Then the next thing is that we're going to draw down the lengthwise grain of the sleeve. So we're going to draw from Z to a point Y. Now point Y is 5 eighths of an inch from the center of my hem. So I'm first going to place a point that's exactly in the center. So that would be this point right here. Then I'm going to place a point, and again I have the orientation the same as the book, so that you can see that this is 5 eighths of an inch. As she has in the book, we're going to draw a point from Z to Y. So Z at the top, down to Y. You do want a point connection, I'm going to be dividing these half in half. Okay, so you can see that it's an angled line, and that is what I uh, want there. Now, here is where we get a lot of lines. If you look at figures 5A, B, placing the raglan yoke, you will see that she has drawn a curved line in here in our sleeve. It's joining with E. You have this extra little point here with E, which is 6 here on my screen, to Z, which is at the top of the sleeve cap, to F, which is at the other side of uh, my sleeve. So I'm going to again take the draft tool. I'm going to start at point 6, which is again E. And then I'm going to use the shift key to make a curved line and I'm going to continue making a curved line here and the amount that I make is just essentially that I have eyeballed this amount okay I don't want it to do that Go ahead and continue to the other side. Again, I'm holding the shift key to make my curved line here. And every so often, 
adding in the point, and then I get to F. Okay, now I want to take a look at my shaping and make sure that it's equal on both of those sides. And if it's not, then I just need to kind of adjust and move some points up so that when I'm kind of eyeballing it here, that again, the shaping, everything looks the, the same. So it looks about the same right there. So now I have a whole lot of lines if you're taking a look at this sleeve cap here. So now I'm ready to turn the page. And figure six has adjusting the lift. And before I can adjust the lift, I actually need to cut away both of these pieces here. Then I can adjust the lift. So uh, in manual pattern making, we can slash this. So I need to, again, cut it away um, before I can slash. So I'm going to go back on my piece here. And... From here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start on the curved line piece on the inside of my sleeve. Then I'm going to select the outside curved line, my former yoke, and let's click, and then I'm going to do that to the other piece and so you'll see that I have my pieces right here Do that way and I've got my former yoke pieces right there so I've got these two pieces and again you can take a look at the book these are the shaping that she has and now I want to shape chase the bottom piece here as well. Make sure that you're getting that bottom draft piece there. Okay. Go ahead and delete the sleep. So now you can see that I've got four pieces now uh, to my, my sleeve. Now what I want to do is again I want to pay attention to what's the back, what's the front. So I'm going to go ahead and again I'm going to label these guys because again very easy to get these confused. Particularly if you move things around. There's my front sleeve. And that in itself can cause fitting problems. Okay. So now I'm going to take the yoke. I'm going to attach it to my front. I'm going to take my back yoke and attach it to the back. I'm going to use my center here as a pivot point. And I'm going to lift it up. And she has it as two inches and I magically got two inches. So I'm going to click on OK, not apply, just OK. I'm going to do the same to my front, click on my rotate, grab the point of my underarm, and lift up, and put in 2 inches, and click on OK, uh, not apply. So we're getting closer. Now we have our lift. Now we need to fill in this shape right here for the back and the front of the sleeve. So I'm going to come in closer for my back and my front sleeve. I'm going to take my draft line and I'm going to click on the point of the yoke, 
create a point connection, hold down the shift key so that I am creating a curve, and then connect to my sleeve. Then I'm going to do the same to the other side, create a point connection. I'm going to hold down the shift key to create a curve line, and then my underarm point. So I have a nice little curve. And back up. I'm going to then go ahead and trace segments. So I'm going to select the outside silhouette. do that to my front sleeve here. Move my yoke pieces off the screen. There's my original. So here there on my pieces here. So I just I'm getting uh, getting some pieces off the screen so that I, I don't get some pieces kind of confused. Now I just need to kind of reshape uh, some of my points here and delete any excess points. It likes to create some excess kinds of points in there. delete what I can, make points like not a straight point, make sure that I get rid of excess little points here. It does like to create some excess little points. Oops. And then she has some kind of control points that she notes here. So it's not a grading or a curve, it's just a straight point so that we can kind of reshape under our arm where we need to. So you notice that she has added a point kind of above and below to kind of reshape our, our lines here. So it makes some um, that are straight points and again because we have done a lot of cutting and stuff we have a lot of excess uh, points on there. So here's my, my shaping uh, that I have for my sleeve. Now, I want to make sure that my hem, uh, though, is straight here. Get rid of some excess points. And so I can indeed go to point and align my points. And make sure that it is with the. Sure. I've got my points here right. Okay. Now, the last uh, section here is that she has added again some control points up here at the corners where we're going to have our shoulder. And those should be just curve 
Yeah, there should be just straight points into here. And then I want that one in the center to be a curve. And then I have to tweak that shaping there so that it's nice and smooth. So again, she's she's added some points. And we don't want any funny little lumps. So we have to kind of like true up that edge there. Now the last uh, picture here it, that it is uh, showing is it's showing to bring in and down the back uh, sleeve. So again, I want to come back to this back sleeve and label it so that I don't get it all messed up again as to what it is that at this point in time I'm almost done so I can go ahead and put in my description and stuff. I'm going to have two opposite side my front sleeve and it's just SL for sleeve, it's a raglan it is self so we're almost done here and uh, to the back if we zoom in close here on the back and again if you're looking at the picture that she's taking the side back point and moving it in and down a half inch so in and down a half inch and in order for that to work again got to make sure that we've got all these extra little points that just love to come onto your piece because you have moved and cut and such so I want to come in and down a half inch so I am on my Y here, I, my X, excuse me, I'm going X is a half, and my Y is also a half. So X and Y are half, and you can see how it's going to be moving down. So it moves down there. Then Y here for the front of the sleeve just comes down slightly, and there isn't an actual measurement it just comes down probably no more than a quarter of an inch got to get rid of excess points again so that I just have a little bit of an angle line there and she has uh, where to notch if you are to notch your uh, sleeve now if you are creating your grain line your grain line should be parallel to the front of your sleeve in the center. And the back of the sleeve in the center. Now I'm going to take these two the grain on here. So here's my shaping for my front and for my back sleeve. At this point I can make it a short sleeve if I wanted to make it a short sleeve. So I want to again make sure that I have two, make sure that it's a rag lump, I close, make sure that it is the right SKU number. This would be pattern assignment five and for all the pieces. And then I want to add my seam allowance so I can go ahead and do a global seam of 
Okay. And my last little bit here is that for my back, uh, actually I want to take off my seam allowance off my back. For the back, this should be opened up. So I want to set the half and then view the half. Bunch of points in here that I need to get rid of. I can now uh, go ahead and uh, do a global seam on that. Okay, so uh, the back, uh, of course, is a mirror line. Now the front, this would be as if it were a jacket. Um, and you could put a zipper down the front, but if it is like your dress that we're showing here, it would be on the center. And again, like the dress, you would be adding a torso um, piece to that, which I am not um, requiring. But you do want to make sure that this is just the front bodice, it's front, it is a raglan, and we have Self, if it has a seam, then it's got to be two. If it doesn't have the seam, then it would be the one uh, piece. So labeling is uh, important here. And want to again be consistent throughout. So here are your pieces that you have. And so again, back sleeve to the back, front sleeve to the front. And you'll see that again I have some extra little pieces, uh, extra little points in there. Uh, that again, points everywhere uh, uh, when you're creating your raglan. And that is it.